Hello and welcome to Pro Trader Strategies Market Commentary for Friday, October the 11th. My name is Eric Wilkinson and some of you may recognize me as the Wolfman from CNBC, Fox Business, or even the Wall Street Journal for my commentary on everything from economic to geopolitical and market analysis. Please keep in mind that everything that we talk about in these market commentaries is not a solicitation to buy or sell any of these securities or strategies. At the end of the day, we're here to teach you some different strategies you can then implement into your portfolios, but please do that in your own way. Also, remember the past performance of any trading system or methodology is not necessarily indicative of future results. All right, having that out of the way, let's get it on with the economic data across the pond. Actually, here in the United States, we got some a lot of good economic data. Across the pond, all we really got was French final consumer price index, CPI, came in at negative 0.2%, expected to be point or negative 0.2%. So pretty much in line with expectations there. A couple of uh, Bank of England governors speaking uh, across the pond. Then back here in the United States, we got our own CPI, Consumer Price Index, came in at 0.1%, expected to be 0.2%. And then core CPI, which strips out food and energy because it's a little bit more volatile on the pricing, just to give us an idea of the overall expectations of uh, inflation. And it came in at 0.2%, expected to be 0.2%, so in line with expectations there. And then ahead of tomorrow's uh, non-farm payroll numbers, we got some unemployment claims, came in at 214,000, expected to be 207,000, so higher claims would expect uh, lead us to believe that more people are looking, and then therefore uh, unemployed coming back onto the unemployment list. Uh, if they were a discouraged worker. Uh, finally, or the last two we got are natural gas storages came in at 90 billion cubic feet, expected to be 87 billion cubic feet, so a bigger build than expected there. And then finally, crude oil inventories came in at a 6 million barrel build, expected to be a 2.3 million barrel build. So three weeks in a row, we've gotten higher than expected builds. The United States is probably the global leader in producing oil now with our shale oil down in Texas and in uh, South Dakota. We are producing about 11 million barrels a day. So obviously um, that is over what Russia is doing. Having said that, everything building, uh, Cushing build, uh, crude oil build, gasoline build, over expected. And then the only thing that we really saw a drawdown in was the distillates, which is uh, what goes into making of plastics and other uh, ancillary things for the manufacturing process. That was actually a drawdown of 2.66 million uh, barrels. So. Uh, pretty much a build across the board with the, those number. API way out of the ballpark last night. Huge build on the upside for the API, which is a voluntary survey. The DOE is mandated. They have to give the right number. So watch the DOE. Don't watch the API, which comes out the night before. Gold futures blasting higher back into that 1200 handle. Like, and just peeling through these Fibonacci levels like it's butter, even the 50-day moving average. All of that has to do with yesterday's big sell-off of today, big flight to quality, as people are probably just covering uh, their longs in the equities, putting money into cash, and then deciding to throw it into gold today is what I'm thinking, because uh, we're starting to see more of a continuation of bearishness in the equities. Now, the Dow, uh, sorry, the uh, Bitcoin futures finally making a move, albeit most people probably aren't too happy about it, to the downside and looking to test the value area low, uh, finally breaking out of that point of control area that we had that real tight range. It was like winding up in a rubber band and finally snapping. Bonds moving higher. I talked about this. Bonds don't have a whole lot of room to go to the downside. I think we're starting to see the economy start to taper off just a bit. It's still doing well. It's just not as robust as we were expecting. Therefore, Fed should start to slow down on interest rate increases. That is going to crush California. They're probably going to be ahead of it uh, and go too far and wait till California starts getting beaten up on their mortgages before they really start um, realizing what they're uh, error of their ways. All right, so VIX moving uh, higher today. Well, it's a slightly in negative territory, but blasting higher earlier today and late in the afternoon when we saw that accelerated sell off into the 20s, uh, which is good for premium sellers, right? Uh, right now, the Dow Jones looking like it's been trying to make a bottom for the most part all day. If we 
finish somewhere around here or anywhere higher than where we are right now, down 130 some points, that's going to make it look like we've built a bit of a bottom. Right now though, the NASDAQ is gonna really have to climb a little bit higher or uh, I don't know what it's gonna do take to make this chart look good, maybe even finish in the lower section of it so that it, it has like a hammer at the bottom there. Right now, it really setting up like it looks like a continuation pattern there and in the E-mini S&Ps. Dow Jones is the only one we're really seeing a little bit of support. That could be because tech is more volatile, right? And we could see people pulling out of these more volatile stocks, the more risky stocks and putting it into blue chips like the Dow and uh, holding on to them there. That's why we're seeing that a little bit earlier in the Dow possibly. All right, so E-mini S&Ps, you can see not anything other than when I was doing the daily market commentary, uh, anything but a slide to the downside accelerated into the close. Today, uh, we tried to make some traction to the upside, but uh, have since slowly started losing that momentum. Uh, and it's going to kind of be a wait and see, I think, the rest of the day to see what the market has in store for us. The, not a whole lot of economic data or any information coming out. All right, a couple of things to talk about with TLT. I'm just looking to get out of this with the nice move we had. If you guys remember, I had on the I have on the November uh, what was it? The 108 puts, I believe it was, or I believe it is the 108 puts. I'm trying to get out of those uh, for about 16 cents, and I originally sold those for 42 cents. So it's better than 50% of the max profit, but I need to let some of these things breathe if the equities continue to move down. Uh, so I'm I'm kind of squeezing out a little bit more than 50% of my max profit on a lot of these, or it, not quite in line with all of my rules. For instance, when we're doing a straddle, I have a rule inside of 10 days, 10% increase in uh, your profit, that's when you should take it 30 days in, about 30 day, 30% uh, profit. I've only been in this for about two or three days, right? And I'm almost at um, close to a third, at least 25% increase in the value. So I bought them at 14, it's trading around 17-ish. I'm working about an 18 uh, 80 offer right now. So I'm off the market, but if we see a slam down, I should be able to get those. But that is going to be something I'm going to be monitoring all day and maybe close by the end of the day just because I've achieved that profit. And this target, the way that it's come down so fast, so quickly that I've beaten the probabilities, I need to really think about getting out of this strategy. So I'm working an offer to get out of that uh, straddle already. Now, XOP talked about this to the downside. Uh, with the XOP, uh, I bought the puts in the December, bought the 43 puts. Obviously, with the market trading, my puts are in the money right now. Markets are really wide with these puts in the money uh, across the board. Very difficult to get out of right now. So I'm just working a bid um, to get out of those at around 16 cents. And I think it's trading around 25 cents. Again, squeezing out a little bit more than 50% of my max profit with this volatility, the way it's going kind of letting things play out a little bit longer until we see a little bit uh, better uh, discernible direction. And I think I talked about, and I finally talked about TLT. So that's it. So looking to get out of XOP, TLT, and uh, SPY, all of those trades today because they are working out quite nicely. Everything with yesterday and today's follow through has uh, been a clinic, I guess. Other than that, today's webinar is going to be on the long straddle. I'm going to talk about how to set up like this straddle we did in SPY for increasing our probabilities of success. You can't get a better uh, example than what we got here in SPY in the last couple of days heading into this uh, uh, webinar. So check that out at ProTraderStrategies.com. Also, give me a thumbs up, thumbs down on this video if you liked it. Let me know what you liked about it. And if you didn't like it, definitely know, let me know what you didn't like about it so that I can make some changes and maybe uh, tailor this a little bit closer to what you guys are looking for. Uh, these are the things that I look at on a daily basis. I don't necessarily know what you guys are looking at, and I would be more than willing to uh, look into that as well. So. Uh, reach out to us at trading at protraderstrategies.com for any of that kind of tidbit of information you'd like us to see as well. All right. So if you can't take that, take it easy.